Before we begin, we want to let you know that today's episode includes discussions of sexual assault and other sensitive topics. Please take care of yourself and feel free to pause or skip this episode if needed. Your well-being is our priority. So, I, what is my point? My point is that I would I've been able to experience healing through a healthy yeah. relationship mm-hmm. with my body, but also with a partner who gives me autonomy mm-hmm. and respects me yep. and you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so, so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It takes work, mm-hmm. right? I did I, I did a lot of my own work to get here, but then but I was not I was single. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you get married and some of these things come out. Why? Because you need to be in relationship to also heal those areas that were hurt in relationships. You mm. need a healthy relationship to provide a corrective emotional experience. Wow. You know? Mm. That's so, so good. What is going on, everybody? Welcome again to another episode of the Valley of the Heroic podcast. I'm so excited for today's episode because I have somebody that, oh, man, I I looked up to since I was a kid, to be honest. You know, I was like a little 12 year old kid having just amazing leaders in my life who um, instilled so much grace compassion mercy for my hard-headedness and for the growth that i was going through as a kid and being a young leader and tamir was an excellent if you know tamir you know she was an excellent example of that um i remember specifically like when we would be getting ready for youth camp i think one of your greatest gifts is 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 the gift of making people feel welcome and I always kind of got that from you. We would be getting ready for youth camp. And if if it was a meeting or if it was an email, you would just be intentional about saying, like, I'm so glad you're here, Eric. Mm. And I would be like, you're glad I'm here? <laughs> 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 because, like, not everybody says stuff like that. You know, not everybody takes the time to say that. And um, you have such an intentional joy mm. that is a blessing, has been a blessing to my life and. I'm excited to have you here, Tamir. Um, I've known since f- what it feels like forever, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And uh, she's here today, so I'm going to pass it on to her to kind of introduce who you are, you know, what you're passionate about, what you enjoy, your family, what mm. you do, whatever it is you want to say. Yeah, so that's an interesting question just because who I was when we first met mm-hmm. many years ago is not who I am today. Mm -hmm. The essence of me is still there, but lots, lots has changed. Um, So who am I? I am Tamir. I am a wife. (laughs) I am a mother. I am a stepmother. I am a daughter. Mm. I am a friend. I'm a sister. I'm an auntie. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a clinical social worker. Yes. And um, currently an executive director at a mental health agency. So I get to lead a really great group of people. That's awesome. Um, I'm a member of a congregation. Um, yeah, I'm a friend. <laughs> I probably said that already. <laughs> that's that's who I am. So you wear many hats. Many hats. Yes. That's awesome. It's 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 great to hear like all of the different things that that you are and that you're doing right now. Like I remember uh, hearing through Joanna. Mm. that you were getting the ed position and that's like i was just like oh yeah that's perfect for her you know because um one thing i do know is that no matter what you're kind of going through or we're kind of going through as people when you're a leader you're a leader absolutely i mean it feels like ministry it is ministry Mm, for me. it is i get to lead a team i you know check in on them meet weekly create the culture of Mm. the organization all those things, um, treat people with grace, hold people accountable, <laughs> you know, it's it's ministry and all the skills and all the leadership training that we got mm-hmm. from the camps, from the conferences, all those things is what prepared me. Yeah, you're applying all of that to oh, them. All of it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Like, and I think that it's 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 great to hear that because we really need a lot of we need more good leaders in this world. 
Yes. We need people who are passionate about people and we need people who are intentional yes. and, and care for people in a way that they need to be cared for. Mm. And um, we really don't have enough of that. Yes. There's a lot of bad leaders out there. There are. You know, sometimes <laughs> I'll be in like, uh, like I've been at previous jobs maybe, or just like volunteering at different organizations or whatever, something, you know, and you have an encounter with somebody who just, you know, they're the supervisor or the team lead or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, how did you get here? It ha- All the time. All the time. Or I hear stories of people who... Um, share their experiences with other supervisors or leaders. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that that was your experience. And I always tell my supervisees, I'm a product of good supervision. And so I want to be able to kind of pass that along. Mm. So I'm really just giving back a lot of what I have received. And then just, you know, kind of adding my own Tamirness to it. But, um, But yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of not good leaders. Yes. I don't think they're not good people. I no, think no, maybe no. They I just mean, lack the leadership skills. <laughs> yeah, they lack the leadership skills. Maybe, you know, maybe a lot of times people just throw people into positions too, Absolutely. which is unfair to the individual yes. who's get, he's going into that position. Maybe they lack self awareness or whatever. You know, there's always That's a something. Big one. Emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff. And yeah. it's unfortunate. And a lot of times I just find myself wishing that they could either you know just get what they need basically to be able to lead well because it's less about like putting them down it's more just about people being led well yeah and being cared for um justice being done right um and then whoever it trickles down to yeah right because a lot of times the leader is leading a team that is serving people yeah and then who who's the one that suffers the most the people yeah you know so That's who I'm thinking of. So leaders in in in, in places yes. you're leading now. What's one of the things that you find the most joy about the leadership positions that you currently hold and the teams that you're leading? Oh, that I find the most joy. in. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think that for me, it's seeing people together. Mm. <laughs> um, we so. What we do, the therapists, they go in home, they do in home and in community therapy. And so because of the nature of the work that they're in the community, they're not coming into an office. Only my admin team comes into the office. Mm. So it can feel kind of isolating. And so part of what I've been able to do with the team is create a space on a monthly basis, on a biweekly basis, where we can all gather and come together, whether it's virtual or in person. So I think one of the things I enjoy the most is seeing them meet each other, um, mm. you know, know that they're not alone in the work that they're doing. Because um, it's not the type of work that you knock on, you know, your coworker's door and vent, right, about yeah. what happened in the day. Mm-hmm. So that's been really cool to kind of create a space where they can come together and make their own connections. Um so being able to build that, I think, yeah. brings me a lot of joy. Yeah, and probably serves them pretty well, too, because you, your That's field is tough. Yes. It's, it's not, not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. for the week. This is what we try to do there. <laughs> it's all the childhood, yo. That's what, at least that's what I've realized. I keep finding out Listen, more and more. And it's all about what happened when you was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your childhood. I just start. I actually just started with a new therapist about yeah. a month or so ago, and we're three sessions in, and we're just all we all we've talked about is childhood. We haven't even gotten to the now. Yeah, and yeah. um, it's it's crazy though how it's crazy how much breakthrough you can get with a good therapist. Absolutely, we're three sessions in, and she's like changed my life with acceptance. Yes. Yes. Like I've just learned to accept things mm. as they are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for some reason, I guess the way that she explained it to me and the way that she contextualized it to what we were talking about, it just clicked. And it was huge for me to understand that there are situations in my life that I can't change. Yeah. There are things that I'm not the person in power to create change in Mm -hmm. and being frustrated with people who are in the positions of power Mm -hmm. does nothing but leave me in a, in a state of 
a lack of peace yeah and yeah. frustration and yeah. despair right yeah and but instead if i could just accept it as it is do what i can mm -hmm. and just allow myself to go through the process mm. it's like that's that was such a freeing thing it is very and, free. And all of it was just about us talking uh, about our childhood. So I'm like, <laughs> wait until we get to what's going on now. Cause Listen, well, it's our formative years, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm now as a parent, I'm getting to, like, I, I've been working with children and families my whole career. Yeah. And so that's different than living with a 12 and a two year old mm -hmm. <laughs> who yeah. are in two very different developmental stages of life and in their formative years. And so, you know, kind of getting to see firsthand everything that, you know, I studied or what I've seen in other families has been <coughs> a lot of things. It's been a joy, it's been interesting, it's been hard, it's been frustrating, it's been enlightening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense that when you talk about our childhood, um, it brings up things that impact us today because those are the years that everything is being formed. Yeah. Right? Our belief, our sense of self, mm -hmm. um, our esteem, all those things. Yeah. So that's so interesting. Um, and I think it it's like a perfect way for us to kind of get into your story as well. Mm. Um, because uh, I tell a lot of people who come onto the podcast, some people, they say, oh, well, you know, what should I talk about? I don't really know what to talk about. And I tell people, hey, you could literally just split your life into three phases, mm. right? Your childhood years, yeah, uh, which are tough for their own reason, yeah. right? Um, your teenage years and your adult years, mm -hmm. right? And however you kind of like split that up in your in your head is 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 good too. And I tell people that because there is like almost a a specific thing that all of us internalize about our childhood, right? Mm. A, 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 a way that we see the pain that we experience and the things that we've gone through. And, um, you know, right now, a lot of the episodes are, or, you know, yeah, almost all the episodes recently have really been about that, mm -hmm. have been about like the valley side, less yeah. of the heroic side. Yeah. Still the heroic side because it's still God showing that he still is the hero that saves us, yes. meets us in the valley, comes and, and takes us out. Mm. And um, and all of that comes from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Isaiah chapter 40 that talks about he will make the the that he will level the low and the high mm. and that he comes into the barren wasteland and he's our hero. <coughs> it doesn't use the word hero, obviously, but. Um, and our story is a mouthpiece for that. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear from you uh, starting, I guess, a little bit about your childhood mm -hmm. and um, your formative years, what that was like for you and how God kind of showed up. Because you're a PK, too. I am a PK. Right. Yes. You're not my first PK on the, <laughs> on the, on the show, but it's I always I love having PKs because yeah. um. This is going to sound really like really funny, but like I love having PKs because it's it's not easy for you guys. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. And so you you see a lot of God's grace and favor being able to like protect you in, in whatever ways are necessary. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get into it. So it's interesting. I mean, you say I'm a PK, but not only am I a PK, but I'm a PK of pastors who were a part of a growing yes. and found like founding the ministry yes. right? that we were a part of. Um, that was also connected to family, right? Like all the things. Mm -hmm. And so growing up was really fun. Um, I mean, things that now I would I, I think about it and I'm like, we they would have ajunos fasts, mm -hmm. right? Or like vigilias, vigils, yeah. starting at midnight. And me and my siblings, we would sleep at church, right? Yeah. Like it was kind of like an overnight. And I have really great memories of us hanging out till late, you know, while my parents were upstairs in the sanctuary with others like praying. Um, so I have a lot of fond memories of as, as a child. Yeah. Um, I think where things started getting tricky for me was adolescence, my teenage mm -hmm. years, which already comes with 
the normal developmental, you know, oh challenges. My goodness, <laughs> But oh. then for for me, we and we moved. So I grew up in Bayonne. Okay. I'm a Hudson County girl. Um, born in Hoboken. We grew up in Bayonne up until I was a sophomore in high school. And so we moved to Jersey City. Mm -hmm. My siblings were in I think when we moved to Jersey City, they were entering seventh and eighth grade, whereas I was entering high school um, as a sophomore. So it was really lonely for me because I went into high school. I mean, you know, like a lot of kids who go to grow up in elementary school and junior high school end up going to the same high school. Yeah. So a lot of the groups of friends were already formed. Mm -hmm. And so I came in as a sophomore. I didn't know anyone. I was in a new city. I was a new girl. And um, the kids for lunch, we went out for lunch, right? I didn't know anything about the community. I <sighs> just had just moved to Dre City. Oh, my goodness. So... No lie, there were times that I had lunch by myself, like in the bathroom. It was like a movie. <laughs> like that I was is, like, it like was so my sad. My heart is like I literally. <laughs> oh. Um, so that was really hard, and I think that I was depressed. I didn't yeah. know at the time. I don't think my parents knew. And it's funny because recently I was asking my mom, I'm like, Ma, how was I? Like when we first moved, and she's like, Well, you know, you've kind of always been. Like, like to be by yourself, which is true. I like yeah. my own company, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't really notice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, I had a really tough time. And so what that did is that it made me vulnerable. Mm. Um, very vulnerable to befriending, you know, the wrong people. Yeah. Because I wanted to fit in, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think... Being vulnerable, I think um, being feeling very lonely, um, not having many friends, I think made me a bit of a target. Um, and so, you know, I had an experience where I was 15 and homeboy was 20 mm. and um, just kind of like targeted me as someone that he wanted to get to know and all those things. And so, again, I'm 15. A guy who's older yeah. is into me, is interested. Um, I don't have many friends mm -hmm. at school. So, um, yeah, it just led to some really bad experiences, including sexual assault. Yeah. Um, and that was really hard as a 15 year old. Yeah. You were in a super vulnerable place. Yeah. And. And, you, you know, you would say that you were preyed upon. I think so. Yeah. I would say so. I at the time I didn't see it that way. Because mm -hmm. you're 15. You think you know everything. Right. Yeah. You, know? you think you know everything. Plus, you gotta take into account all of the emotions you were experiencing. Yeah. You know, your heart was wide open. Yeah. You absolutely. know, and that and that in no way, shape, or form puts you at fault in any way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what decisions you made. Yeah. You were vulnerable. Yeah. And what's so interesting too is that. I mean, you know, my parents, they're awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I can't say that I grew up in a home. Whole where, family's awesome. Yeah, I mean, they are. <laughs> um, I love the pictures from vacation, oh, by the yeah. way. Like they were crazy. <laughs> I was just like, yo, they got everybody smiling. I was like, everybody looks so hot. It must have been the vacation vibes. It was. Yeah. Were, you know, the sun was vibing, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, but I mean, you know, to get those pictures... To, I know. Yeah, you know, it must have been nuts. So yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so my family is great. My parents are awesome. Like, I can't say that I, I, I did not grow up in a home where there was like trauma in the home. Right. right? right. Like in the sense that we think about trauma, like mm -hmm. child abuse or physical abuse or anything like that. Yeah. Um, my parents were very present. Um, were they really busy with church? Yes. Mm. Right. Um. Did they maybe over spiritualize some things? Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, which is why that experience ties into my understanding. What 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 helped develop my understanding of like healthy sexuality and faith and God in the midst of of that experience. And can I even tell my parents about this or not? Mm -hmm. Um. So anyway, it, it's it's complex. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I I see um, 
like even in what you just said, I'm seeing just how you went from A to B mm -hmm. and how this experience really shaped you in a way. And then you come to a place where God has to now contextualize all that yeah. to not to, to, to give you an understanding and also to give you a voice to speak out about it in a way as well. Um, I want for the benefit of, of everybody, listen, even for me, I mm -hmm. want to understand more, more about your process in getting there, your journey in getting there. Cause I'm seeing you as the 15 year old girl who's, who's, um, new in school, mm -hmm. who's experiencing, what were some of the, the emotions you were going through? What were you feeling? What were you, what, how was your relationship with God in this time? You know, how was your, you you everything was healthy with family. Yeah. Right. Yes. And then as these years went by. Yeah. And whatever happened, happened throughout those years. You're also growing into the woman that God made you to be today. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you could take us through a journey for, and I know that as a therapist, you've sat through all of, well, you sat through a lot of this. Yeah. You, right? Like you mean like my own personal mm -hmm. like journey. Well, what's yeah. interesting is that, I, so I'm a, like I said, a, a clinical social worker and we don't have to go to therapy. Like there are some programs, grad school programs where going to therapy is part of the mm -hmm. curriculum. For social work, it's not. Mm. So I didn't go to my own therapy until I was a young adult. I think like early 20s um and i had like a mental break i had a depressive episode i started wow. having panic attacks i knew what they were in theory not actually experiencing them myself mm -hmm. and that is then what led me to my own therapy journey but that was years after wow years of a lot of stuff <laughs> you know yeah um so i would say like as a 15 year old like as a teenager I don't know that I was very aware mm. of what I was going through in the moment, right? Like I was like living through the, going through the motions. I was very focused in school. You know, I was always, I've always been a hard worker. I've been working since I was 15. Shout out to Helen's Pizza. That was my first job. <laughs> um, but you know, like I was, I was always focused in school. I was always focused on, you know, work. Um, the way that I think that experience initially started playing out was in my relationships with men, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the relationships that I would get into, um, how I would let myself be treated mm. by men in relationships. Yeah. Um, Go into that a little bit. Cause I'm the, the big thing I'm, and if, if obviously if, um, something is too much, you don't have yeah, to go yeah. into it, but. I'm thinking of the person who's listening who might have gone through something similar. Yeah. And or may be in it right now and is not even aware of it mm -hmm. because right now you have the benefit of hindsight and therapy. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Well, here's an interesting part of it, which ties into like faith and what we learn about sex, right? Growing up, at least in the, in, a, in the Christian faith. When that happened, I didn't understand it as sexual assault. Mm. I was like, oh, snap, I let this happen. That was my understanding of it. Yeah. Um, because all I knew about sex was you don't you don't have sex until you're married. Right. Right. So I think back to that day and it's like we were hanging out. We were in his home. I went to his room and then it happened. I did say no several times. And then eventually you just, I just kind of gave up, right? Yeah. Because the no, he was not listening. But the way I understood that was I let this happen. So yeah. it wasn't until years later that I'm in therapy that in passing, I mentioned it to my therapist. We weren't even talking about that. And I was like, oh yeah, and then this happened. And she's like, hold up. As there, as Wait a the minute. Therapist do. <laughs> she was like, hold up, back. Like, what? So I shared again, and she's like, so it wasn't until almost a decade, if not more than a decade later, that I was able to actually understand that what happened to me 
was an assault on my body, on my being, on my whole self. I did not let it happen to me, but that's how I understood it. Yeah. Because of what I had learned at the time about sex and sexuality in my body. Yeah. You know? It contributed to like a feeling of shame or guilt. Yes. Shame, guilt. Um, I think that the way that it played out in other relationships is that I didn't have a good sense of self. Like, yeah. I remember I was in a relationship with this one dude. And for those of you who know me, I have a scar here mm -hmm. on my shoulder um, that it came from the chicken pox and I have keloid skin. So the scar has just grown as I've grown. And this dude was like, you know, that scar is disgusting. Like that scar is so gross. And this is a guy I was dating who had said that, you know what I mean? Like, and he would berate me and like say terrible things. And I was like, okay. You know, um, so it really it really impacted my sense of worth, my self-esteem, my value of myself, which is wild because I grew up in a home again where like I felt very valued. I felt yeah. very loved. I felt very seen. Um, and it, when I was 18, we went to a retreat, an encounter retreat. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I think God confronted me in like the most impactful way. That that was the shift for me. Wow. I want to hear about that. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about just the church's approach to sexuality. Yeah. Because I feel like that's such an important topic. Yeah. Especially for the time that we were coming up. I think the church is improving now, but mm -hmm. um, purity culture was like this huge thing. Yes. Um you know everything was just about what you can't do yes um how it, it was it's heavily shame based mm -hmm. right and you know granted we understand what what the bible says about you know all of these things but more so the church just needs to do a better job about teaching sexuality in a healthy way mm -hmm. right that helps helps people yeah <laughs> right like being yeah. like even even just simply the fact of being willing to have conversations yeah not not just the conversation at the retreat the yes. kids the youth retreat no. where it's the last day and they're like okay we're gonna throw in the sex talk <laughs> and we're just gonna stand there for an hour and we're gonna tell all the kids that you're not allowed to have sex and we're yeah. gonna put tiaras on all the girls yes and they're gonna walk in Promise front of the ring. guys which is mad weird yeah. now that I think about it, yeah. by the way. You put the, the all the symbolism, a little key. You put the key into a thing. That's the key to your heart. Like, <sighs> very, it, it was... Very, very odd. But, yeah. you know, I, I guess they were, like, experimenting and trying. But know. we're not ready and willing to have real conversations with real people. And all it does is it propagates a culture of shame. Not just that, but it sets us up for failure. Like you, I, many people who we know or people who we don't know or like people who grew up in that culture who may now be married um, or partnered and are having really difficult, you know, sex lives with mm -hmm. their partners because mm -hmm. we were, there was so much shame around mm -hmm. our bodies, so yep. much shame around sex. And then all of a sudden we get married and there's a switch and we're supposed, and we're to, supposed to be okay. Like, right? no. <laughs> and all the conversation about sex is about how much you can't have sex. Exactly. And, and then, then all of a sudden, married. I'm supposed to do right. it all the time. And I'm supposed and to figure this my, out on my own. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So I agree. I think that it, it's it's complex. Um, and also it isn't, right? Because yeah. like, like it's a it's a very human thing. It's a gift that God gave us yep. to be able to connect, right, and mm -hmm. have intimacy with right. someone who we love, right, mm -hmm. and someone who loves us. Yeah. And so, can we talk about it in that way? Can we normalize, mm -hmm. you know, our bodies? Yeah. I mean, and and part of the theology too that it's like we teach um, that it's a fight against the flesh. Yeah. So that I like that is 
hard because it's like growing up, I'm like, oh, it, it's a fight. I'm fighting against my own body, mm -hmm. but then I'm, my body's feeling all these things, but it's a fight. It, it's this vicious cycle. It's not healthy. Yeah, it's super unhealthy. I, I, I was watching um, uh, on B side, they have a, oh, a yeah. new podcast with uh, Carl Lentz and yes, his family. So good. Yeah, we were just listening to yeah, it on the way here. Really good. Yeah, they were doing an episode. I can't remember which one it was, but um, they just had a conversation about things that was absolutely fascinating to me. Yeah. Because they were talking about how they talk to their kids about sex. Yes. And and they were talking about exactly this, you yeah. know, and. Yeah, there's just the, and you know what it is, is that we're just behind on research. Yeah, we're really behind on understanding. Humanity. Yeah. And taking scripture and applying those two things together. We just want to make it easy because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Like we could get that out of the way. We could say that it is an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. But if the church is not willing to lean into uncomfortable conversations. Yes. Somebody else is going to speak up. Yeah. Here I come. Here I come to interrupt. Interrupt. But for a good reason. For a good reason. Hopefully. Hey. I'm just trying to see if you're paying attention. Boop, 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 boop. All right, all right. All jokes aside, I just want to take a second to tell you that you are an amazing person for one, being here and listening to this episode because you are taking steps to grow in your faith and just overall become a better person in this world. If you are here, I already know that you are a hero to somebody and you want to be able to grow and be the best person that you could possibly be. And so the reason I'm interrupting you really quick for this episode, and I want to be really quick, is to tell you about our Patreon page. Patreon is a separate platform where I and anybody that's involved with Valley of the Heroic can upload additional content for you to consume. So the question then becomes, why would you want to join? First of all, it gives you an opportunity to bless us. All of this work is done completely and totally for free. The Patreon page gives you an opportunity to give towards us and to support this ministry and everywhere that we are taking it. Secondly, you don't just get that. You also get opportunities to see behind the scenes content, extra content, exclusive content, Q&A sessions, community chats, and overall just that extra sauce for you to be able to become the hero that God is calling you to be. So if you've been blessed by Valley of the Heroic in any way, and you just want to get more involved or you want to bless us so that we can be able to continue to do this work, Patreon is the place to go. So take a look at the Patreon page and see if there is something that really works for you to support us on a monthly basis. So before I let you guys get back to the episode, I just want to tell you one more thing. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the like button if you can to make sure that this episode gets to more people. God bless you guys. Back to the episode. Back to the episode. I mean, I, I tell my in, in my field that is that is what as therapists we invite our clients to do, but also we have to do that ourselves to lean into the discomfort. Yeah. Um, so I love that you said that. But also part of what I think about, too, is, yes, I do think we're behind in some of the research and all those things. And also, like I think about my parents and. I don't think anyone talked to them, sat them down and talked to them about sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So like My goodness. It's kind of like in your episode with Leap about giving grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, now as an adult, I've been able to have very healing conversations with my parents where I can understand they did the best that they could yep. with the yeah. knowledge that they had. Right. Um, and so then it's just about us doing better. So yep. like I tell our 12 year old, I'm like, you want to talk about sex? Talk to us about sex because we have sex. Right. Right. We're the experts. Let's not normalize it. Yeah. <laughs> have, yeah. I'm like, we like talk to us. Uh huh. You got questions? Ask us because you know what? They're going to ask the questions to somebody else or they're going to Google that. And I rather them talk to us about it. Not only that. Oh, my goodness. T. That's so powerful because 
what it does is it it, it removes the atmosphere of shame that surrounds yes. those conversations yes. because you're so candid right even i I'm hear it even in the be. way right but you have to be <laughs> yes because it's already uncomfortable yeah don't make it uncomfortable oh, and then you're it. also dancing she around like, it right you know what i'm saying i'm like listen i'm just saying right and then the reality <laughs> is is that kids are you know naturally your body is advancing quickly right yes and you're feeling all of these different things like you mentioned earlier when you're a teenager you're the just by the mere fact of being a teenager, yeah. it's difficult already. Well, biologically speaking, your brain is going through, like, you know how when kids from birth to five, that's where they say, like, their brain is developing at a rapid level. It then kind of takes a bit of a break until adolescence wow. and puberty. So your brain is just like on full blown developmental wow. blown. That's why your hormones are being impacted. <sighs> like, it's so wacky. You it's know, crazy. it's hard. It's so hard being a teen. You know, for for me as a teenager, one of the the biggest things that that did so much damage, I, I mentioned it in, in an episode that I did with Vanessa. Hmm. And, uh, you know, for me throughout my teen years, when after I lost my virginity and um, I just wasn't I wasn't able to abstain. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, I didn't wait till marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. And. It was really, really hard for me. And I tried really, really hard. Like I really, um, at least I feel like I really gave it my all. Yeah. Right. And I remember whenever I would mess up, oh my goodness, the shame oh, was it's debilitating. It is. Yes. And you know, you go and you you wanna have the conversation with somebody, you kind of don't know who to talk to. Mm-hmm. And then if in in Things that are that delicate, the margin for error for the person who's in a position of power oh. is very small. Yes. If you mishandle it, yeah, even slightly, you lose. That's it. Yeah. It's no longer on the table. I don't want to have that conversation with you. As yeah. a kid, I'm saying, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so um connecting that to what you were saying about being you know the way even just the the manner by which you said it was so candid and so Mm. open (laughs) right it needs to be that way and the church needs to have the same approach like hey you know even make a joke about it like hey uh i know you guys are uncomfortable yeah we're having this conversation right or or opening the door to those conversations because the shame that wraps around it, I feel like is really a shroud from the enemy that's yes. really messing people up because you're going home and then you're thinking things for all of these years, like you were thinking of yourself, Yes, that you let something happen to you. Not just that. I mean, yes. And what added to that was, and I think I feel like I've talked about this in um, like retreats or things like that, but like, A couple of years after that incident, so I also was not, because part of my thinking at that time was, oh, well, it already happened, Mm. so I might as well just keep, like, doing it. Plus, that relationship was just toxic. (laughs) It was a dirt, right? Um, But at some point, my parents found out that, you know, I was having sex. And I remember my mom wrote me a note, which I know she did it with the best of intentions, Mm -hmm. right? Doing the best that she could. Doing the best that she could. And she also didn't know about the initial, like, assault. Right. Which is, by the way, how I was, like, introduced to sex, right? (sighs) Which is, like, horrific, you know, thinking about it. Um, But in her letter, she wrote to me, she's like, you decide if you want to continue to sin or if you want to be, like, the princess that God, you know, created you to be, which further like um, solidified that belief that like, yeah, I, I like I let this happen. This this yeah. is my fault. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Yes. This is my fault. Yes. <sighs> Especially because now you're 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 continuing. Uh, you, you were continuing like it, it's so logical what you said. Even you were like, you know, oh, it happened already. So, yeah. you know, because everything. The church makes everything about getting to marriage pure. Yes. So oh now God. I had the that, similar like, thought. Imagery of like the rose and every person that you give yourself to, and then you're married and you're a stem. I'm like, I don't want to be a stem when I'm married, babe. Am I a stem? And, I'm not a stem. <laughs> um, <laughs> but think about the message that we're sending with that. Yes. Right. Yes. It means that you can never be whole again. Yes. 
And that's not the gospel. No, it is that is not, not the gospel. No. God is more powerful than any mistake that you could possibly make. Yes. And he's more powerful than any mistake or any grievance or any assault or anything that was done against you. Absolutely. And there's healing that can come. Like I can say I have had healing experiences that because here's what ha trauma happens to our bodies but they play trauma plays out in our relationships mm -hmm. right yeah and so now all of a sudden i'm married and now i'm supposed to have sex all the time well not all the time that's not true but like you still gotta have breakfast <laughs> and lunch <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying so I, what is my point my point is that I would, I've been able to experience healing through a healthy yeah. relationship mm -hmm. with my body, but also with a partner who gives me autonomy mm -hmm. and respects me yep. and you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It takes work, mm -hmm. right? I did, I, I did a lot of my own work to get here, but then, but I was not, I was single, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you get married and some of these things come out. Why? Because you need to be in relationship to also heal those areas that were hurt in relationships. You mm. need a healthy relationship to provide a corrective emotional experience. Wow. You know? Mm. That's so, so good. So, yeah. So thank you, husband, for creating that healthy space where we can both heal. Um, yeah. It's such a beautiful thing to be with the person who honors you. It really is. Right. And it's worth it. I didn't think it would it. happen for me. I didn't think it would happen. And it did. But it did. I is remember. It, praise God. Isn't yeah. that good? It's so good. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> uh, for me, like, uh, for me, it was just like, I didn't think it was going to be as good as it is. Mm, yeah. Right. Because I, I got lucky. Yeah. I Joe, got extra lucky. Joe is great. amazing. She's so great. And it's like, you, you gained the benefit of being able to see this person that you're connecting with who honors and respects who you are, what you do. Mm -hmm. And that intimacy just keeps growing. Yeah. And if you can take like, if that intimacy can keep growing, plus you can keep doing the work to grow as a person. Yeah. The sky is the limit. Yeah. It's literally the life hack to everything. Yeah. And I just love being able to experience that. I love being able to see it in my friends, too. Mm -hmm. To see healthy marriages. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, to see everything that we kind of went through, but still God is showing himself triumphant. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because, like, as a 15-year-old kid, I, you, I was internalizing thoughts like, oh, you know, I, I didn't make it to marriage, so, you know, I'm not. Like what it, I, I can't have a wife who uh, is going to see me and see me as a as a pure person mm -hmm. or who sees me and sees me as as holy, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not really the word I was thinking in my mind. It's more feelings and emotions that I had about myself yeah. that I was then applying to whoever I was going to marry, which mm -hmm. ended up being Joe. And then you bring that into the marriage. Yeah. Right. And you have all these views about yourself mm -hmm. that are not true, that are that don't honor God, right? Mm -hmm. That that don't don't come from Him yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And those things have power over you. Yeah. Right. I, I'm sure yes. that's why your therapist was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. We need to talk about this." Yeah. And for you, it was just like, "Oh yeah, you know, this happened." Boo, boo, boo. And then back to what I was saying, mm -hmm. but. Uh, praise God that your therapist was able to stop you there. Yeah. Because a lot of healing occurred. I'm so grateful. I actually, I start, I, from that, I participated in a group. It was like a Christ, uh, faith centered, like group for victims of sexual assault. And it was awesome. It was really great. And part of what I learned through that was Christ experienced pain. Mm. And so that's what they, like in the curriculum, it talked about the cross and the pain that Christ experience and how he understands our pain and our suffering and um i think that was one of like the first experiences where i learned oh okay like it's 
it's okay. Like suffering is a part of the human experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. and God is with me in the midst of it. Wow. Um, and then there were many other experiences that helped me, you know, see God in the midst of it. But I think that was one of the first ones that I actually saw it. I was like, oh, yeah, Jesus did suffer. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he understands pain. Yeah, because uh, it's funny because there even becomes a, a, a situation where even the idea of suffering makes you feel shameful. Yes. Right. Because well, you think, because oh, you I'm got... doing something wrong. Yes. And also because like the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> literally that's it, you know, and, and growing up in Latino church too, it's yes. like, it's funny that like we have a lot of these things that again, it goes back to the whole doing the best that they could. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, but it still creates a culture where we internalize these beliefs and then we apply it to the different areas of our life, whether yeah. it be sexually or just like, uh, in pursuit of our purpose or what we're good enough to be. Well, it's hard to be authentic when, you know, you, you kind of feel like you have to perform. And so when someone's like, when you ask someone, how are you? Right. We usually are like, oh, we're okay. Yeah. But we're not okay. <laughs> yeah. In some ways. Um, you could be having the worst day in the world. And you're yeah. like, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is literally the opposite. <laughs> you know? So, um, and then add on to that, right, like this, the, the whole notion of like, joy of the Lord is my strength and I'm blessed, you know, which that can be true. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But also like I need the joy of the Lord because I'm in pain and because I'm suffering. And so it's like I need strength because in an area I'm weak. Yeah. You know, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent. 100 percent. That's exactly what it is now. So, um. Going back to 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 your story and yeah. just kind of like what was next. Mm. Um, do you remember where you left off? So I think we talked about the like the retreat and that was like mm -hmm. the because. That's where I kind of felt like a call from God and where everything right, changed Right, that was where God me. started the healing, uh, the, the confronting. Yes. Okay, so that was like, that's a very specific word. So why did you use the word confronting? Why do you feel like God confronted you? Um, so I think up until that point, my faith journey had been one that was not personal. You know, I grew up in a home where my parents are pastors, you know, and before they were pastors of their own congregation, they were we were like heavy part of the, you know, the church in Jersey City. My father, I think, was the assistant pastor for a while. So church was a part of our lives. Yeah. Right. And so um, I think it laid a really good foundation for me, but it didn't <coughs> my faith didn't become personal to me until that retreat and then wow. after. Um, where it was like, like, I want to get to know you, mm. um, like Tamir, like, this is me, Yeah, you know, God, God speaking to me, <laughs> you know, like, this is me. I am. Yes, I am the God of your mother and of your father and of your grandparents, but I'm your God Wow. also. And so, you know, I got myself a Bible in English mm. and, um, I, I think at that point I just, the zeal, the desire, the passion just went from there on. And then that's where you kind of, you know, we've had the experiences of the youth ministry and yeah. the retreats and all of that. Everything changed after that retreat. Wow. Man, that's amazing because um, I hear a lot of PKs, you know, say something similar to, to the idea that there's a, a season of just not even like playing church. It's just kind of like, you know. Uh, it becomes a part of your family culture. Absolutely. And, right? Absolutely. And yes, I know how, you know how to turn it on. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all know. Manos, <laughs> bendiciones, <laughs> you know. The stuff that will really rile people up. <laughs> Listen. There's certain have... lies you say where they're like, they think you're the, <laughs> the most powerful Christian in the world. And again, as a PK, like, you know, we would go to visit churches. They ask us to go to the front. You have to like introduce people oh you know goodness. like introduce you so like it's it's it is a part of the family culture yeah 100 yes yeah, yeah. Oh, man. that's and that's tough because 
you know, obviously God wants to have a personal relationship with you. God wants to um, both heal all of the different childhood traumas that you've been through. Mm. And then also he wants to just like rock your world with relationship. Yeah. And the closeness that you experience with a savior that you can't experience nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious to know what what was the process of healing that God brought you through? Starting with that that situation, these next few years, even leading up to now, where mm-hmm. as 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 an, a fully grown adult woman who's married and has children, what what is God? How has God brought you to where you are today, and what is God even doing with you now? That is a loaded question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I always have loaded questions. By the way, um, I love it though. Um, I mean, there have been a lot of different, I would say, kind of like chapters, mm. right? Like in, in, if in the story of my life, there's a number of different chapters wow. um, that include suffering, healing, joy, suffering, healing, joy, celebration, right? Like all of us. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I mean, I want to say. um one of the ones that was most significant for me was, okay, so I go to this retreat. Um, I'm passionate about God. I'm also in college. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, st- I'm going to school. Um, then I graduate and then I go to grad school. It was kind of like, I always knew there was a formula, mm-hmm. right? As far as like school career, right? Like yeah. high school, college, work, grad school. Um, and I was involved in ministry at the same time. All that it, ministry felt like a whole full time job for me. Mm-hmm. I could imagine um, in many ways. And then um, around, I think, I don't know, 2016, 2017, um, I was working full time as a therapist. And I had a caseload of like 30 to 35 kids and families I was working with full time plus ministry, which again, I was like the worship leader. I was a youth leader. I was on the pastoral team. Um, I was on like the regional youth stuff, yeah, right? Uh-huh. So it's like I so many that. things. Yeah. Um, and then my body was like, nope, we're not doing this. And wow. I started having panic attacks for the first time. I went through like a very depressive state. And what was scary is that I started experiencing suicidal thoughts. Mm. And that for me was like the alarm. I was like, oh, these are scary thoughts I'm having. And then that's when I went to therapy the first time. And were it was you like kind a of dealing f- with all of this yourself by yourself or were you talking to anybody at this time? No. Yeah. No. At this time, I already had like a really great support system as far as like my 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 family, my siblings and I have always been very close um my parents too at that time i was already like more open with them and then my friends i have a really really solid group of friends so i wasn't alone in that sense Mm -hmm. but it was the first time that i was experiencing those types of challenges that were impacting like my my mental health you know and i had to stop it was a forced pause um i couldn't quit my job right 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 so i had to pause with all things ministry and that was really hard because so much of who I was was wrapped up in that Tamir the youth leader Tamir the worship leader yeah Tamir you know the pastor's daughter right like so much of my identity was wrapped in that so when um because of my health I stripped those things away it really rocked me um, but it was in a, the most beautiful way. It was painful in the moment, but now I can see how God used that as a way to remind me that all those titles, it, I'm a, I'm a child of God. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. You know, and I still, and, and if, if I'm not on the worship team and if I'm not doing that, if I'm not, that, I still matter to God. You do. God still loves me. Um, I still have value and worth. Um, so that was like a hard, a hard time. It's so funny because, uh, not what you went through is not funny, but it's funny how when we go through situations like that, 
um, many times it's almost as if you have all this mix of emotions Mm -hmm. and you feel guilty for like taking a break, for example, because your whole identity was wrapped up in that. And I'm sure that in many ways, God was like, oh, we've gotten to this chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he takes joy in the fact that he stripped you of all of those things that you expected of yourself. And others expected of me, too. Like I had to go that part. (laughs) <laughs> that part because i know that there were people who were mad that tamir wasn't worship leader no more yeah. that tamir wasn't serving the youth anymore yeah. and there's almost this like hey get it together it was a lot of pressure yeah a lot of pressure that i put on myself and that other people i think put on me as well and the um like fear of disappointing I, I feel like I disappointed a lot of people. A lot of people I feel like had put like high hopes in me that I would, you know, reach and do all these things. Right. And um, so that was that was really hard um, to feel like I was letting people down um, and not meeting their expectations. And you and the crazy part, the craziest part about all of that is that you needed to you needed to stop. I needed to. I needed to. I had I had alopecia. I had like stress induced fall spots. And, you know, when I don't have my braids, I got big hair. And so yeah. that was like really <laughs> scary for me. Yeah. But it was like stress. It was yeah. stress. My body was calling out to me. Um, and it was like, you need a break. <sighs> you need you need a break. If you could, um, if you could talk to your younger self, you know, those few years before leading up to that, Hmm. what would you kind of tell yourself to help you not necessarily to avoid getting in there, Mm -hmm. right? But to make that process maybe a little bit more at ease for you Mm -hmm. because i'm sure it was extremely difficult and you know i say that i asked that question thinking about anybody who might be listening Mm -hmm. who's like oh my goodness this is exactly what i'm going through Mm -hmm. and i'm wondering what are the words that the younger tamir needed to hear in that season of a lot of doing I think I would tell myself it's okay to say no. Yeah. It's okay to say no, even to the people who've poured into you and who love you and who expect things from you. It's okay to say no to them because they're still going to love you. Yeah. And you're still going to have value to them. I would tell myself to pace myself. You don't have to do all the things all the time. Um, I would tell myself to sleep. <laughs> that sleep is good. Yeah. And your brain needs sleep and your body needs sleep. Um, yeah, I feel like those are the and, and to ask for help. Yeah, that's ask so for good. help, girl. <laughs> ask for help because you can't do it all on your own and i think part of that was me like trying to do things but then it's also part of control like i Mm. wanted to be able to it was hard to ask for help because i knew that i can do things the way that i wanted to do them yeah um which is a sense of control which connects to the the trauma where control was taken from me so that's something else that i've been you know, <laughs> that wow, God's wow, been wow. working with me in many areas of like when you've been in a traumatic experience where control is taken from you and your body autonomy is taken from you, then you try to have control in other ways, in other ways. And so for me, that's part of what it looked like for me being busy, 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 doing things on my own. Like it was trying it was me kind of just <sighs> regain that control. You know, wow, that's powerful. It all connects. It all does. It all connects. And in connecting those connections, which is so funny, it leads to such powerful moments, which 
I want to take a commercial break to advocate for the importance of going to therapy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because, yo, listen, God is so powerful. And God is also the one who created our bodies. Yes. Created the systems that govern, like literally put in the, all of, all it is, is your body trying to protect you. Yes. 100%. Your body's trying to protect you. Your 100%. body's trying, like the way that the body works is it's amazing. It's fascinating. Yes. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Where, um, yeah. oh my goodness, it's it's like, I'm, I'm not even going to get into it. But <laughs> um, so all that to say that because he created those systems and he gave us intelligence, it means that if he gave us intelligence and the, the ability to study things and he created those systems and he knows how we can be healed, then therapy is a godly thing. Absolutely. God can absolutely use the therapeutic experience to bring forth healing. Yes. And... It's Whether both, you're it's and, both and yes, it's like both one and. of the things like I have a sweatshirt. I didn't wear it today, but it says I have Jesus and a therapist. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I, I, that's um happy givers, right? Maybe. I don't, yeah. I don't know. It was a I gift, think, actually. Maybe it is. <laughs> that's funny. I think I, I've seen it on, yes. on their website. And so what I was going to yeah. say was and your therapist doesn't have to be a Christian. Yes. That part. That part. Because so many people. Don't go because they're lo- and, and it's they're looking hard. for a it Christian therapist. Fi- yes, and that is hard to find, but they they don't have to to be effective and they for God don't. to still use them in your healing process. They don't because let's break this down, right? Again, going back to what I said, God created our bodies. Yeah, He created human beings. He gave us the ability to reason, understand, to to have intelligence and to study. And if He created this system. And that person studied that system and they're qualified in that system Mm -hmm. and they know how to bring about healing through that system. Mm -hmm. Then that truth, the truth that that is governed within that is still God's truth. Absolutely. And then the other part of that, too, is that as a trained therapist, we are I mean, and obviously I can't speak for all the programs, but we are taught that spirituality is an important part Mm -hmm. of our humanity and so a good therapist if you express that you are a person of faith they will it is our duty to study on that to look that up to to kind of give ourselves the knowledge so that we can create a space where you feel understood where you feel valued right so Mm -hmm. and and any good therapist will be able to do do that that, yeah right Mm -hmm. and so yes i love that and that's not to say like that's it's bad to, to have not, a good yes, a christian no, therapist that's right that that's there, not to knock that either can, great yeah amazing Wonderful. if you can right like but joanna's I, therapist she's a christian yes and she be laid down the word but i'll tell you what i also had an experience with a christian therapist who was a blessing uh-huh was much of a blessing to me but then once i started bringing up topics that i believe conflicted with her theological view i no longer felt that it was a safe space for me to bring up some of those questions or to bring up some of those things that I wanted to process because (sighs) she would try and, you know, kind of bring me back to the theological view that she thought we both were in alignment. Right. And may not necessarily have been right. And that's not the purpose of therapy, right? Like we're, it's not not about the therapist. It's about you. (laughs) I've heard some horror stories. I don't ha- no, I don't have any horror stories, but I've heard some horror stories mm-hmm. of um I don't I don't want to say bad therapists. I don't I don't like the sound of that, but just uh therapists who maybe had a, a bad moment, right? Because of their faith and they yeah. like kind of like but their horror stories. Missed right? the mark, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you missed the mark. Missed so the mark. I told somebody recently, I said, I would rather you find a good therapist then be really, really stuck on finding a Christian therapist and find one that maybe isn't as good as the one you could have had, right? Yeah, yeah. And there are Christian therapists out there. I wish there were more, right? And here's the thing too, Eric. I'm Christian and I'm a therapist. Like, I did not market myself as a... I'm not doing (coughs) biblical-based therapy. Yeah. But 
when I would see families and I would be in the office, I would pray in my mm -hmm. office that God yeah. would use me as a vessel to right. bring forth a healing space. Yeah. Right. So even though they weren't coming to me as Christians or they weren't coming to me because I was a Christian therapist, but I was a I am a Christian who also was a therapist. And so that's all part of who I am. And that yeah. all came in the work that I was doing. Absolutely. You know, that's beautiful. Um, yeah. So and that was a long commercial. Disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, no, but I just, <laughs> I just need people to go to therapy. You know, I need people. Like, I'm always telling people that, like, you, I just go to therapy. And like, I spent, I spent a long time looking for a Christian male Latino therapist. Which girl? Hard to find. It's a unicorn. I know. That's a unicorn. A <laughs> Christian up. male. Yeah. Latino. Yeah. Therapist. Yes. And I also kind of want him, wanted him to be a little bit charismatic, <laughs> right? So not just Christian, but like a little bit more towards my theology, right? Yeah. And I, I actually found one. And let me tell you what happened when I found him. Was he booked? He didn't take my insurance. Yeah. Which is a part of our system, the system that is, I'm not even going to get into. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's tough because we tell people go to therapy, but then it's hard. It Some, is. you know, like and we have to acknowledge with the insurance that. with but there are resources out there mm -hmm. that for like if you don't have insurance or low cost stuff. So there's stuff out there. It's, it's hard to find. It is. Yeah. Um, but I think the intention behind like, you know, going to therapy and being intentional about seeking it as hard as it is like, you know, we've told people, my husband and I like. Hey, you need help looking for one? Let me know. I'll help you. Yo, me right? and Joanna do it all the time. Yes, because it is a hard process. Right. And, and um, yeah, I get that. It's like it's so hard to find somebody. Yeah. So if I can help a person find somebody and, yeah. and get them on there, tell them like, oh, this is what I did to find yes. somebody. These are the questions that it's I so asked. Helpful. Yeah, like, it's so helpful. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's stop the commercial. <laughs> but it's really important, you know, because it's just. Yeah. So, man, um, it's just, it's wonderful to see the different things that God was doing in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to dive uh, into something specific that you said, right? Mm -hmm. Right in the beginning, you said mm -hmm. the, the Tamir that you knew back then is not the Tamir that I am today. Yeah. And that's all God. Yeah. Right. That's all yes. God. We all go through that process. Mm -hmm. Right. I am so thankful that I am not the Eric that I was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, right. I'm yes. so grateful that I'm not the Eric that I was five years ago. Yeah. Three yes. years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. I guess like last year, I could even say, right? Straight up. Like yes. I'm I'm really, really grateful. I'm with you. And so what can you share with us about just your journey mm -hmm. in and who you've developed into? Yeah. You know what you're proud of with yourself like yo shout yourself out real quick tell us about that that process yeah so i want to say in the you know we talked about the different chapters mm -hmm. so oh, man i'm thinking about the pandemic that came and shook everybody's yes up, right so i got married a month before okay <sighs> february 2015 wow. no february 15th 2020 yeah. so a month before quarantine Really grateful you got to have your wedding, though. Yes. So yes. grateful. You know, no one had any idea what we were, mm -hmm. you know, walking into or expecting. Um, but what a journey. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> you know, so um, I became a wife. I became a stepmom immediately. Right. Um, and then we were in quarantine. Um, so, and I, I was going through changes in my career as well. Like I changed, I was at an agency for oh, almost a decade and then I, I changed to another agency. Wow. So a lot of change all happening at once. Mm -hmm. Um, and my body went through a whole other experience of mental health challenges, you yeah. know, kind of experiencing more panic attack. I think my body just couldn't handle all the change. Yeah. You know, um, so that was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, my husband and I went through a infertility journey mm -hmm. um, where, again, we got married in February of 2020. September 2020, I had surgery, major surgery 
to remove. I had 13 fibroids surrounding my uterus. And the doctor told us, if you ever want a chance at having kids, we need to have surgery. Um, and you need to start trying like right away. Wow. Which was not our plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I could imagine. You want to go on vacay. <laughs> you <know? laughs> want to get to know each other. Like, right. The pandemic probably accelerated things a little bit. Listen, but still, you want to just like get some time in. Not, I get it. It was not the plan. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I think I, I got I like went through a whole other journey of healing of like getting to know my body in a different way. Wow. Being gentle with my body. Oh, that's so powerful. Um, I mean, talk about loss of control. Right. Like I needed help walking, going to the bathroom, you know, all the things. Wow. <laughs> so um, I'm really grateful for my family um, who held me down during that time. Yeah. And me and my husband yeah. like saw me at really, really difficult moments. Um, we went through a miscarriage once we got the OK to start trying after my surgery. Um, which I wrote about, um, baby B is what we call the baby. I have a ring here that says baby B's name to remind me. Um, and that was really hard too. Yeah. And that journey of like, will this month be the month? And That's then it tough. not being, it's so hard, yeah. um, to keep hope alive. Mm hmm But to also kind of keep space for the reality of what, could be that it might not be this month. It was, it was, it was something. Yeah. And I, you know, I, we didn't, we had, a, um, we didn't experience infertility in the way that is typically experienced, but we had some scares. Mm -hmm. um, Joanna uh, at one point had Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. right? Disease and God healed her from it. Thank mm -hmm. God. But with that comes all these scares and, and yeah. things and, you know, God just removed it. And um, I say all that to say that, you know, I hear frequently that it becomes tough even in another way, too, because everything becomes about having a baby. Yeah. Right. Because the doctor says you got to start trying now. Yes. And so even in a way, would you would you say what what would you say that experience was like for your marriage and for, your, you know, you guys connecting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there were moments that felt like, hey, I'm ovulating. We have to yeah. take advantage of this window. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, even if I wasn't like in the mood, it was yeah. like the app says I'm ovulating. Yeah, so yeah, go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this thing right here. <laughs> Esto me está diciendo. Right now you is know, time. Right. So so that was, you know, yeah, it was it kind of took the, I guess, like not spontaneous. It, it just felt a little forced. Right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. this was the goal. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm grateful that it it thankfully like in our case, it didn't it, it didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. Our miscarriage was in April. And then that August, <coughs> we got pregnant with Nalani. And so... Beautiful baby girl. Yeah, she's awesome. How old is she now? She's two. <sighs> time, yeah, so... Time is so fast. Think about God, right? Like, the miscarriage of baby B was in April of 2021, and Nalani was born April of 2022. Wow. And so... Um, That's crazy. I'm just really grateful um, for the journey, the process. And so... You know, but then that turns into a whole other, like we have the baby and then now postpartum is like, yeah, not so fun. Let, um, me, let me tell you when Joanna had, when we had Kaya, the level of respect that I had for women, which was already, I think above average, mm -hmm. like skyrocketed yeah. because it's not easy. Everything that you guys go through in bearing children, mm -hmm. right? Bringing them into this world carrying them yeah right and just just the normal typical woman experience can be difficult in so many ways mm -hmm. and um you know i don't even know why i bring that up but i just think that we just need to hold space for women 
and lift them up and honor them when they deserve honor. Like if it's your wife and she gave you some babies, honor her by doing them dishes, dog. <laughs> like honor her, you know, and like and and don't complain. And, you know, maybe don't go out so much and and, and be more present in the home. Yeah. And um, it's 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 just amazing to see what God was bringing you through yeah. and who he's bringing you to today, even. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Because I hear a story of um, a lot of loss. I hear a story of of pain, of suffering, but I also hear God in the background. Oh, absolutely. It's I, I feel like. I am currently living the things that I prayed for. I was journaling about it the other day and I'm like, I have a partner who is everything that I prayed for and then some. I have a family that loves me, that supports me. I have a career, like I'm an executive director. What? That's like, sometimes really I'm like, <laughs> really me, you know? And I mean, yeah, there's a whole like imposter syndrome thing we could talk about, but it's, it's God's grace and I just feel so blessed. And so when you when you talk about when you ask me like who I am today, like do I still struggle? Do I still have pain? And so, oh, absolutely. And yeah. I probably you know, we'll as long as we're alive, we're mm -hmm. going to continue to go through that. But what I love about getting older is it gives you perspective. And I can say well, I got through that. Mm -hmm. So even though this sucks right now, I know that it won't last forever and I'm going to get through this too. And you have your, and there's evidence. Wow. Um, so my life is awesome right now, you know. <laughs> I just feel really blessed. I do. I feel really, really blessed. And, you know, normal everyday challenges of, like, parenting a toddler and a 12-year-old <laughs> and leading a business. You know what I mean? All, yeah. all the things, uh -huh. right? right? But it's, it's I'm blessed. Yeah. And I'm so grateful. T, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you for listening and for creating this space. Um, I was really nervous at first, but it's definitely felt just like a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I just learned so much about you. And uh, for me, it's always just an honor to be able to hear someone else's story because mm -hmm. there's so much in there about what god is doing in our lives and we need to be able to hear stories and and sometimes it, sometimes it's just good to give like somebody like you to be able to share who you are what you've been through um there's power to that too yeah it, it almost gives you some some control back yes yeah so thank you thank you for creating this space i'm so grateful to see what you're doing <laughs> thank like you. it's super cool um and it's very needed. I truly believe that healing comes in us sharing our stories. And so you creating this space to have other people share um, is doing so much, so much good. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> if that was the therapist in the first session, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not coming back. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Actually, I know you did. Make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.